it goes with everything. You know, the drinking and drugging is the same thing. I get that program in my head. You can't just kick that program. And that and the cigarettes kept that going. Oh, it feels great to be tobacco free. Being able to have a where well, I'm not a prisoner anymore. I still remember thinking at the very beginning, oh, it's not that bad, right? You know, it's just cigarettes. And now one of the surprises for me is that I am, I believe that it's just as important and I don't minimize the negative, the negative impact of relapsing on tobacco. I'm amazed at how much our colleagues have grown because it, it used to kind of be this, er, they're relapsing, what are you going to do about it? Kind of that kind of a thing. And now it was we're in this together. You have to be committed to doing this, but, but once it's working, there, there's nothing. There is absolutely nothing that, that I, I would quit. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, uh -uh. if they said we're going to start smoking, I would say then you're going to do it on your own. I'm that committed to it. And I think our colleagues are that mm -hmm. committed to it. So they're, and not only that, but our patients are committed to it. For me, I chose this. I mean, I, I think it's the right way to do it. There's probably 75% uh, of us down there that were smokers that came in. I thought there would be more people, you know, Jones and throwing a little fit that they need a cigarette, but everybody's everybody's been pulling together. I knew that smoking was bad prior, but I wasn't going to be able to quit, you know, without getting clean from alcohol and whatnot, too. Whenever I would go out drinking that I would need a pack of cigarettes because I, I, it just goes hand in hand for me personally. Well, maybe when you get out, you're kind of like, okay, well, I've been, I've gone without a cigarette this long, then maybe I can do it, you know, continue to do it out of treatment. Um, our quit kits is something that we just started. And what we realized is that folks as they're leaving the facility oftentimes aren't prepared um, to quit smoking or to not chew when they leave the building. Some of them have cigarettes out in their car. You know, if they've come into detox, they're under the influence. So, so it's really been a nice way to say to them, if this is something that you want to continue, you know, we're, we're more than happy to help you. And I, I just finished a tour with some nursing students, and, and I took them out on the, the walking trail, and I stood in front, and I said, do you see where that sidewalk that leads to nowhere? That's where the smoke hut was. Yeah. And I said, and, and we would never go back. It's not about you've been bad. It's not about shaming them. It's about um, what can you learn from this experience? Because the same process that led you back to smoking is going to be the process that leads you back to drinking or to heroin or to, you know, cocaine. It's that exact same process. So let's use this process that allowed you to go back to smoking cigarettes when you know you shouldn't. And let's apply that to, to the other drugs of abuse. And you can see that it's, it's the same thing. Cigarettes might be a little bit harder than the other to throw away because they're everywhere, kind of like alcohol is. It's everywhere you go, every store. But the good thing is, is that we have seen no decline in our census. And I think one of the, the most significant things that my treatment centers say we can't deal with nicotine and tobacco is that they, they think that they're going to go out of business. It doesn't happen. It's very good to be a part of that. But on the other hand, it's very sad that... It was this late in time when places became non-smoking. In my opinion, what I know now by being a non-smoker and through numerous treatment centers, this was my sixth time through a 30-day treatment, and I relapsed, and I kept smoking. They were all smoking facilities. Every one, in my opinion, ought to be a non-smoking facility by, because I know firsthand what smoking and my addictions, how they go hand in hand. And... I don't know why people don't. All treatment centers aren't mm -hmm. doing this.